Now see a measurement of temperature. So, temperature can be measured by a device that is known as thermometer. You know thermometers are constructed by using the property of the any matter whose you know any parameter changes with the sufficiently changes with the temperature. For example, there are certain matter whose volume changes with the temperature that can also be used as a standard for measuring temperature. There is also the change in the pressure. You also can see here the change in the resistance. All these the quantity which can vary with the temperature can be taken as a standard for constructing thermometers. Now, see here there are basically two types of thermometers here we are using. They are not only two, there are more than two types. But right now we are going to discuss only two types of thermometer. First one is the Celsius scale that Celsius temperature scale. See here in the Celsius temperature scale, freezing point of the water is taken 0 degree Celsius and boiling point of the water is taken 100 degree Celsius. Between 0 to 100, 100 divisions are made. Each division is equal to 1 degree Celsius. Now, Another temperature scale is there is a Fahrenheit scale. In this one, freezing point of the water is taken 32 degree Fahrenheit and boiling point of the water is taken 212 degree Fahrenheit. Between these 32 and 212, 180 divisions are made and each division is here actually equal to 1 degree Fahrenheit. Now, we can also see Celsius scale and the Fahrenheit scale with the help of the graph here. On the x axis I have taken here the Celsius scale and on the y axis I have taken here the Fahrenheit scale. From here this is the 0 here and for the Fahrenheit here at the 0 degree Celsius this is the 32 and by this way we can take this graph. So, this graphical study of the Celsius and Fahrenheit scale. Now, see absolute temperature scale. So, we have done Celsius and Fahrenheit scales. Now, this is the third type of the temperature scale which we are going to study here. Now, see here first we have drawn here the graph between temperature and pressure. So, on x axis there is a temperature in degree Celsius, on y axis there is pressure. This graph is like this A to B and now these are the corresponding temperature for the corresponding pressures. If this graph is produced here this side you will find this graph is meeting on the x axis at this point, this is negative x axis. And wherever it is meeting that temperature is minus 273.15 degree Celsius. Now, at this temperature pressure reduces to 0. So, now see this is the equation for an, uh, for, uh, an ideal gas and now here n is the number of moles of the gas, r is a universal gas constant and V is volume, P is pressure. For the given volume, P is directly proportional to T. It means there is increase in the pressure with the rise in temperature. But at this temperature, pressure becomes 0. It means if you go beyond this, the graph will be going here this side. It means volume will become negative. So, at this point pressure is 0 and volume is 0. If you go beyond this, you will find volume becomes 0 which is impossible. So, this is the minimum temperature which can be attained that is minus 273.15 degree Celsius. This is taken as absolute 0. For the calculation in place of minus 273.15 degree Celsius, we can write here minus 273 degree Celsius. This can be written like this. Now, by using this scale, Kelvin designed a temperature scale in which 0 is considered at this that is a minus 273.15 degree Celsius and, and each division of this scales are equal to the Celsius scale. So, in the Kelvin scale you can write here T k is equal to temperature in Kelvin is equal to we can write T degree Celsius plus 273.15 or also you can write here this you can round up that is equal to 273 only. 